We all know the story of the Lord of the Rings and its many heroes, villains, and epic battles. The story of the One Ring itself, however, is a longer one, with a history that stretches all the way back to the beginning of J.R.R. Tolkien's fictional universe. Sauron, the actual Lord of the Rings referred to in the title of Tolkien's epic, was created by the deity Eru in the time before the world was made. In his early life, he was called Myron and served as a craftsman to higher beings until he was corrupted by Morgoth, the original Dark Lord of Tolkien's world. Morgoth attempted to conquer Middle-earth in the First Age, and when he was defeated, Myron fled judgment, hiding in Middle-earth, building his power until he could make his next move. The elves ultimately came to call him Sauron. As the centuries passed, Sauron began calling himself the Lord of Gifts and visited the elves. Though some of the elves, including Galadriel and Elrond, distrusted him, the elven smith Celebrimbor was taken with Sauron's gifts and together they began forging the Rings of Power. They eventually gave 19 rings to the races of Middle-earth. Sauron forged the One Ring in the volcanic fires of Mount Doom, pouring much of his own essence and power into it. The plan was to use the One to control the wearers of the other rings. Unfortunately for Sauron, the ring-bearing elves were able to sense the presence of the Dark Lord and avoid his control, leading to a war against Sauron for the Rings of Power. The war finally ended when an army of men joined with the elves. Sauron retreated back to Mordor to recover. More centuries passed as Sauron continued to fortify his stronghold in Mordor and completed the Tower of Barad-dûr. Near the end of the Second Age, he was strong enough to again attempt conquest of Middle-earth, but the armies of Numenor, the Nation of Men, marched against him. Sauron surrendered and was taken as prisoner, but he was not humbled by his supposed defeat. In Numenor, Sauron again assumed a beautiful appearance and convinced the Numenorians that they should worship his old master, Morgoth. It was here that Eru, the supreme creator of all, intervened. Numenor sank into the sea, its armies were drowned, and Sauron's physical form was destroyed. His spirit, however, was able to return to Mordor, tied to the material world by the One Ring. Led by Elendil, the survivors of Numenor escaped to Middle-earth. Sauron watched the formation of their kingdoms, and his hatred of Elendil led him to attack. Elendil and his sons, including Isildur, knew they couldn't battle Sauron alone, and formed the last alliance with the elves to make a stand against the darkness. The siege of Barad-dûr lasted for years, until Sauron finally came out to join the fight himself. It was then that Isildur took up his father's sword, Narsil, and cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand. Sauron was defeated, and the victory marked the end of the Second Age. Sadly, Isildur was seduced by the One Ring's power and kept it for himself, only losing it when he was killed in an ambush by orcs. The ring vanished into a river and would not be seen again for centuries. For more than 2,000 years, the One Ring was lost. That changed the day two cousins, Smeagol and Deagle, went fishing near the spot where Isildur was killed. There, Deagle discovered a gold ring in the water. Smeagol was immediately drawn in by the One Ring's power, and when Deagle refused to give it to him, Smeagol responded by strangling his cousin and taking the One Ring for himself. Precious. With the ring granting him an endless life, he spent 500 years alone in the dark, as his body and mind were twisted by the ring. Over time, he came to be known as Gollum. Gollum and his ring lived in seclusion for centuries, until a hobbit named Bilbo Baggins accidentally stumbled across the creature's lair while lost in the Misty Mountains. Bilbo found the ring in the dark and used it to escape Gollum after a riddle contest at which, quite frankly, Bilbo cheated. What have I got in my pocket? That's no fair. Though he initially lied about the ring, Bilbo did eventually tell the wizard Gandalf the Grey more details about how he came to possess it. Gandalf was able to deduce that it was one of Sauron's evil rings of power. Still, the wizard decided the ring was relatively safe in the hobbit's hands, leaving Bilbo to keep it at his home in the Shire. Bilbo kept the ring for decades, intending to one day leave it to his nephew Frodo, with Gandalf's blessing. When the time came, though, Bilbo seemed reluctant to part with it. This led Gandalf to realize that Bilbo's ring was not just one of the magic rings, but THE ring, Sauron's long-lost One Ring. The danger of the One Ring itself, coupled with Gollum's recent emergence in Middle-earth and the return of the dark forces like the Ringwraiths, 
led Gandalf back to the Shire to warn Frodo. He told the young hobbit to set out for the elven city of Rivendell, where Elrond was assembling a council. They decided that the ring must be taken to Mordor to be destroyed in the fires of Mount Doom, as it was the only way to prevent Sauron from eventually reclaiming it. Frodo volunteered to be the one to take it, and was joined in his quest by others. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. The Fellowship of the Ring, as Frodo's group was now known, set out from Rivendell while agents of Sauron continued to pursue them and amass forces, leading to tragedy for the group. Fly, you fools! Later, when the Fellowship was attacked by orc warriors, Boromir, a noble soldier of Gondor, was killed while defending the lives of the hobbits. Before he died, however, Boromir succumbed to temptation and tried to take the ring from Frodo, which led Frodo to believe he needed to leave in order to spare his allies the burden of the ring's power. Sam refused to let Frodo go alone, and so the two ventured off to Mordor together. When Frodo and Sam became lost trying to find the way to Mordor, they realized that Gollum, who had been set free after torture at the hands of the orcs, was following them. After capturing him, Frodo and Sam ordered him to lead them to Mordor, a task he agreed to in order to stay close to the ring. Eventually, Frodo, Sam, and Gollum made their way into Sauron's Dark Realm. War erupted all around them, as the remainder of the Fellowship continued to battle orcish armies in a bid to buy Frodo time to destroy the ring. Gollum, meanwhile, continued to plot against the hobbits in order to retake the ring for himself. In his bid to eliminate the hobbits, Gollum led them to what he claimed was a shortcut to Mount Doom. In fact, it was the lair of the giant spider Shelob who nearly killed the hobbits. When Sam and Frodo finally reached the fires of Doom, Frodo gave in to the ring's power and put it on, refusing to destroy it. It was here that Gollum made his move, pouncing on Frodo and biting off the finger that held the ring. Gollum, reunited with his precious at last, was too lost in celebration to see where he was standing. He fell off the edge into the magma below, destroying himself and the One Ring. Sauron, whose essence was directly tied to the ring, was defeated, and all of his armies instantly collapsed. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite franchises are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.